Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy Pressman, and I'm a partner here at the R-Crowd Sports Tech Fund. But more importantly, today we have a couple CEOs, and this is our second breakout session where we're dealing with data security and green tech, and we have some fantastic CEOs. Uh, the first I'm going to call up is Sotiris from Centaur. Hello, everybody. At Center, we believe that safe and abundant food is a fundamental human right. And we actually implement technology to make that a possibility for generations to come. So what we do at Centaur specifically is we enable the instrumentation, or if you may, the digitization of the entire supply chain of crops and food from farm all the way to the shelf. Why do we do that? We do that specifically to reduce what's currently a one trillion US dollar loss of crop value annually. That's how much we're wasting each year from the crops we harvest. And that's something that needs solving. The root cause for that is usually spoilage and pest infestation. And luckily, technology today can help us fight against those problems. While at the same time, with our technology, we help feed the blockchain. I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about this traceability and how to, you can use the blockchain to effectively know with objective data where your food came from. So we're an enabler in that by providing timely data from storage and transportation of crops that can actually ease the path to regulatory compliance and food safety. Now, how does our solution work? The key problem we had to solve, and we solved it with our smart wireless crop sensor, is transmitting information that's relevant to crop storage and crop quality from inside bulk storage. Not from the outside looking in and just sampling, but from inside bulk. So our wireless sensor today can accomplish sending, transmitting wirelessly information well, while buried inside grain 10 times more efficiently than what was previously thought possible. And of course, that capability we have filed patents for. So this capability is very fundamental. It enables a host of use cases that are important for tackling the challenges that I mentioned before. So collecting the data is the first step. How do you make sense out of the data and how do you go about solving the problems of spoilage and in insect infestations. There's three things we do today. Spoilage, predictive analytics. So based on the type of crop you have used our sensor in, we can collect the information of temperature, humidity, gas concentrations, and give you actual dashboards that are presenting important agronomic data like safe storage time. We can actually tell you how much how many days of safe storage time you have in each of your grain bins or in your warehouses where you're storing product in bulk. Second thing, microclimate control. It so happens that there are ways to remediate spoilage problems before they manifest themselves. So to enable that, we do a lot of parallel computing on the cloud using a technique that's proprietary to our stack known as CFD, computational fluid dynamics. And that enables us, quite simply, to tell you weeks or months in advance if a, a spoilage event will happen based on what our sensors are sensing inside your product, but also based on the weather conditions around storage. And third, and quite important, fighting against pests, but doing that in a cognitive and prescriptive manner. So our system will actually define the recipes which entails the concentration of the chemicals and the durations for pest treatment. These durations are typically in the several days or even weeks. We can actually micromanage that process through our system and tell you when you have reached 100% statistically, uh, statistical probability of elimination of all stages of insects inside stored product. Now, what is the market for this? The market is quite significant because this solution can sell to the entire supply chain of multiple actors from farm all the way to retail. So on-farm storage, plant in a warehouse, logistics, and retail. 
And the actors there are farmers, sellers of, co of commodities, traders, <clears throat> logistics services companies, and eventually buyers and ingredient and food manufacturers. For wheat and corn crops alone, the available market for our solutions globally is three or to three and a half billion for each of those key cash crops of, of wheat and corn. In total, if you add specialty crops, for instance, we provide our solution today for uh, tobacco, which is a very high value commodity. In total, we're looking at a $20 billion aggregate market for census and data analytics. And we intend to be the leader of that. Now our competition looks like this, uh, solutions that are tethered and clunky, like silo cables that are just monitoring temperature, or manual methods, you need an operator, error prone, cumbersome. Now, compare that with our solution that's always present inside storage, automated, driven by powerful data analytics. Now the team that's behind this is very seasoned and actually highly complementary. My personal background as CEO and founder of Centaur, I was previously the founder of a semiconductor design software company that actually has uh, powered the chipsets in today's smartphones to a large extent. Uh, I'm a PhD in microelectronics. My co-founder, Vasily Sotirudas, is a renowned agronomist and uh, expert in the field of pest treatment. And for sales, we have Richard Katmeyer that's been leading the ag consulting practices of houses like KPMG, Accenture, and IBM. And our chief strategist and board chairman, Avi Reichendahl, is a very seasoned and storied entrepreneur. He was previously the president and CEO of 3D Systems. Before that, he was a VP at Sealed Air, providing packaging solutions to the food industry. So uh, in summary, uh, we are currently present in more than 10 countries. Our solution is past of proof of concept. We wouldn't have accomplished all this if it weren't for the support of our investors, our crowd. We were based and started our business in the country of Greece, not too far from here. And we like to consider ourselves as part of the Israeli ecosystem of thriving ag tech companies. With the support of our crowd and our other investors, we intend to leverage our head start and our leadership position in post-harvest Internet of Things, or as we call it, the Internet of Crops. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Sotiris. Up next, we have Tomer Tzach from CropEx. Hi. Well, excited to be here. Actually excited to present uh, here in Israel, where I don't need to carry this through uh, airport security. So this is our product. We'll start with a short two-minute video, and we'll uh, take it from there. Do I need to? Can you, can you start the movie? Perfect. Thank you. It's your land, and you know it better than anyone. Every crop, every ditch, every plant. You also know that adaptive irrigation is the key to getting the most out of your soil. These sensors give you the simplest, smartest, and best adaptive irrigation solution. It's completely do-it-yourself. You'll be up and running in no time. The revolutionary spiral design allows for easy installation and perfect results. It's irrigation with the difference. CropX combines advanced cloud technology with affordable sensors in the ground. Unique CropX technology scans your field and analyzes its different zones. The CropX mobile app directs you to the exact point in your field to place the sensor in the soil. Simply scan the QR code and the sensor automatically connects to the system, starts gathering data, and sending it to the cloud. Now that your fields are connected online, expect to receive texts from them. Your fields now have a voice. So, Dad, what's your field saying today? No need to water today. The CropX system automatically generates the optimal irrigation plan and sends it to the app for you to approve or modify. Adaptive irrigation works for me. Hey, Dad, the field's texting you. Yes, you can now tend to your field anywhere anytime. 
Rest easy while CropX monitors your field and optimizes crop yields. Skeptical? Try it on just one pivot and see for yourself. CropX, the internet of soil. Can you switch to the presentation, please? Yeah, okay, thanks. So uh, four minutes, 34 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna talk real quick. Essentially, CropX has produced or uh, developed the only soil sensor that's out there today that is applicable to the mass market. When I say mass market, I mean the broad acre crops, the commodity crops, corn, potato, alfalfa, soybeans, um, et cetera. Eighty percent of the market in the United States today does not have a soil sensing solution for three main reasons and three main uh, differentiators for us. One is uh, pricing. Uh, John Deere, for example, have a product, a soil sensor, costs about $50 per acre. Now, if you take the average corn grower in the United States with commodity, current commodity prices, we're talking about a net, um, a net profit at the end of the year of about $100 to $200 per acre per year. So he's not going to buy a John Deere for $50. CropEx comes at $10. Um, that's, uh, uh, but that's just one flip of the coin. More importantly, uh, do it yourself. We're the only soil sensor that's out there today that a farmer can install by himself in five minutes. Back to um, other uh, um, competitors such as uh, John Deere, half a day of installation, uh, uh, four feet hole that you need to dig in the ground, uh, installed by a John Deere technician and therefore not scalable. We had a farmer uh, this year, a customer, that installed 50 of our products in uh, one day. The only thing that took time is essentially uh, driving around between the various installation spots. Uh, third advantage for CropEx, connectivity. Most of these rural areas just have no, um, no connectivity whatsoever or very weak connectivity. We managed to tackle that quite nicely. We don't look for 4G, we don't look for 3G. Uh, essentially, we chop the data into small pieces and set it up to the cloud by SMS. And in about a month and a half, when we're, uh, uh, on our next product goes out uh, to the market, we're going to be the first soil sensor that uses satellite transmission and essentially will be able to work anywhere across the globe. Uh, I won't make, uh, waste too much time on uh, introducing the people, just uh, in terms of the organization, 20 employees here in Israel, uh, mostly the uh, technology side, data science, machine learning, hardware, software development, agronomy, 10 people in the United States, uh, mostly sales and customer service. Kind of the classic Israeli story, a lot of uh, uh, very talented guys coming out of the technological units um, and uh, um, you know, applying what they've learned to civilian space. Uh, just as an example, uh, Nadav, the upper right side, uh, developed the hardware. Uh, he actually was in uh, 8-1, that's the military unit that does all of the technology development for the special, uh, uh, for the elite forces. So when he interviewed with me, I remember him saying that this is exactly what he did uh, in his military service. He created these soil sensors that the IDF would put in the ground in Syria and Lebanon, would collect data and send it back home. So now the only difference is that his sensors are going to Kansas and Nebraska rather than uh, uh, Lebanon. And that's just one example. CropEx has a very, very strong syndicate of uh, investors. Um, Finisteer, the largest VC that does ag tech in the United States today with uh, LPs such as PepsiCo, Agrium, and so forth. Very, very powerful for us. Um, Bosch, Flextronics, the largest uh, sensor manufacturers in the world. Of course, our crowd, Germinate Ventures, also a food ag tech fund out of uh, uh, Chicago, Green Soil, the Israeli uh, Finisteer. And uh, I think most importantly to, to note, Innovation Endeavors, the fund by Eric Schmidt, Google's chairman. Uh, I would like to point out that the reason that Eric Schmidt would invest in CropEx is that CropEx doesn't view itself as a sensor company. Um, we view ourselves as an ag analytics company, and at the end of the day, each and every one of these uh, sensors, um, as of this season, is going to know where it was put in the ground. Um, it's going to know what crop is growing uh, above it. Uh, it learns by itself the soil type, it uh, knows when there was an irrigation event, when there was a rain event, when there was a fertilization event, even if we'll know if there was plant disease and, and add to that weather and so forth. So at the end of the day, it's a big data play. And by 2019, we should be able to say that a, a farmer that grows corn in, on sandy loam in the Kansas area uh, that uses a certain irrigation method and a, fer a certain fertilizer would be able to produce 5% more yield than someone doing things a bit uh, differently, and that's a game changer. 
So in terms of the vision, um, essentially um, da data-driven farming, bottom-up. The bottom-up is very, very important in terms of both uh, the ability to penetrate. Yeah, I'm done? I'm done. So uh, just one more uh, uh, kind of one more slide and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll vacate the stage. So essentially, um, a lot of use cases. We started selling this year and already have about a thousand of these deployed in the United States. When we started selling, we thought we would be mostly about um, water conservation, but it's very exciting to see right now that we have so many different farmers that are using this for so many different reasons, whether it's for regulation purposes, for example, farmers buying this to get uh, um, uh, more water quota from the USDA or to save on labor or even energy. Each one of these pivot irrigators, the large sprinkler on the side, cost about $500 just to spend one turn, and we're able to save at least three or four of those every season. So that's kind of in a nutshell about CropEx. If there are any questions, um, be able to probably take one or not. You're, You're kicking me off. Thank you. Thank you, Tomer. Up next, we have Ophir from Tyrannus. Hello everyone, uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Ophir Schlam. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Tyrannis. Uh, so Tyrannis started about uh, almost three years ago. Uh, today we're already a company with uh, 35 uh, people, uh, R&D based in Israel and operations in uh, Canada, US, Brazil, Argentina, Russia and Ukraine. Um, we're a full stack company. We're uh, developing our own hardware to capture a uh, unbelievable level of imagery that you'll see in a second, and then analyzing it with uh, deep learning to make sense of uh, what is inside all these pictures. Uh, plus, uh, we give a farmer an all-in-one uh, dashboard to manage uh, a lot of aspects of his crop. So um, the mission statement here is uh, help farmers protect their crop against problems that are worth more than uh, $300 billion a year across uh, different crop disease, insect, weeds, nutrient deficiencies, and even abiotic stress. And Tyrannus is enabling them to have a healthy farm uh, using the exact amount of chemical at the right timing, the right place, um, using uh, analytics that is clear and visual, so it's not taking out the guesswork. So uh, Tyrannus uh, just go really quickly over the different um, uh, layers that we're using. We're heavily using remote sensing from satellite with more than 100 different uh, satellites. Um, we're licensing their data, analyzing the crop status, the chlorophyll levels, biomass, and uh, building uh, all these alerts to the farmer. It also helps us to do uh, prescriptions for fertilizer. So we can take, um, the farmers have yield maps of where they had different uh, amounts of uh, product in the field, join it uh, with the satellite images, and build a real uh, zone map of the farm, of economics, where they should put more fertilizer and get more value, where they can actually save on fertilizer because the soil cannot get to that much uh, yield over there, things like that. A really revolutionary technology is the aerial imagery. And if uh, some of you are familiar with the current uh, level of drone technologies or aerial imagery, uh, they don't come close to this kind of resolution and scale. Uh, I'll show a, about, a bit more examples in a second. We also provide the farmers with a scouting app, so they do all the field scouting uh, instead of manually and taking notes in a notebook, they do it all digitally, so, and then we analyze it according to um, uh, advanced thresholds. We also deploy uh, sensors and we mostly connect with uh, external sensors as like CropX or, uh, or others. Uh, World Meteorological Organization, and overall we compiled a network of 200,000 weather stations around the world, so we can be very close to each client. And then we also build predictive models to simulate how bad the problem is going to be based on the data we already have. So we see the first symptoms of a disease, and we have this network of weather stations and forecast, and we can say to the farmer what kind of risk he has right now and how it's going to evolve the next, uh, during the next few days, uh, up to four days. Um, so that's uh, the entire offering. And let's talk more about the aerial imagery because that's our main differentiator. So like I said, current drone technology gets you to this. It's a two inch per pixel resolution. 
maybe one, someone wants to say what they can see here, and uh, which problems. Exactly, basically it's, it's nothing. It's not very, very helpful. Uh, so it's not the right product, I think, for a farmer who really makes uh, not enough margin to spend his money on things that don't actually translate into more money immediately. Even if you look at these nice uh, contrast colors, um, maybe you see it more clearly, the, different, the differences, but still you have to go there and actually check what did you find there? Is it an insect problem? Is it a disease? You can't really know. And there's a lot of false positives. So again, we don't see it as, as the right tool. Whereas our imagery is uh, you know, actionable. It's as good as an agronomist walking in the field. It's an automated agronomist for them, basically. We, kept, we can count insects, diseases, weeds, resistant weeds from a plane while going at 120 miles an hour and, see, and counting beetles. That's, that's the technology here. Um, maybe going to some uh, examples. So uh, we sample the field. An agronomist would take about four hours per field and uh, just scout about 10 points. We will scout 300 points and, uh, in 45 seconds. Same 20 times more data at 40 times faster than an agronomist, basically. And of course, it's not in replacing the agronomist. The agronomist can use this later to focus his attention and writing the prescription what to do about all of these problems. The weed problems, the resistant weeds. Uh, so we're ne not reducing, uh, that's not our offering. We don't uh, reduce their cost on, on labor. We just help them to increase their yield. Each one of these problems are worth several percent of their yield. Uh, like you saw in the first slide, they are losing 38% on average on the different problems. If they find it at the right time, at the right place, and, and prevent them from happening or advancing, they basically get this yield increase and that's where uh, the money is, that's the win-win situation we create between us, the farmer, and even the chemical companies because they can uh, sell their product and show that it's effective. How does the technology work? How can we do this amazing imagery uh, when all the other companies have to go really high up and then the resolution is not very good. So this is a normal camera. There's a blur in the images, especially if you go lower and faster. And our camera can track the ground in real time. So that makes our <coughs> images uh, so clear and uh, without any blur. And then we can get to a resolution of 0 0.2 millimeters per pixel instead of that five centimeters per pixel that is available today. And we can do it in a third of the price because we can do much more scale. We can do a million acres a month, so we don't have to charge as much for this imagery. Because today a drone company usually uses one drone to do um, just uh, about um, 100 acres an hour, when we can do with the same drone 1,000 acres an hour and more. And if we need more than that, we can put it on a plane and do 10,000 acres an hour. Um, so again, it's unprecedented scale and resolution, as you can see here. Um, and it goes through all the different uh, use cases. Uh, it's already available in US, Russia, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay. Uh, helps with diseases, insect, weeds. Um, I'm almost out of time, so I'll just scroll through these pictures so you can kind of see it, and I can share all of it later with you guys. But this is actual imagery captured over millions of acres and all uh, analyzed by deep learning and professional agronomists to give this value to the farmers. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sophia. Next we have Ben from ozone.ai. Hi guys, my name is Ben Coleman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ozone AI. Uh, can you hear me now? We'll start with a quick question. Please raise your hand if you have a Visa credit card. Keep your hands up. Please raise your hand if you have a Dropbox account. Please raise your hand if you have a Hotmail account. It's almost everybody. 95% of you have had your information stolen. It's a huge statistic. So we're ozone.ai. We use AI to protect data everywhere, inside and outside of the firm. We protect data if it's copied, downloaded, sent, or stolen forever. We use AI to identify anomalies, to track trends, and protect data no matter where it goes, whether an employee is fired, quits, loses his or her laptop, or emails Russia. 
We protect data following emerging trends and emerging regulations, including GDPR, HIPAA, Safe Harbor, and PCI. My background is cybersecurity and blockchain at Goldman Sachs and Google. My co-founder led machine learning AI at Thomson Reuters. We have a 16-person team in Israel and the US. We're also an investment of the Office of Chief Scientist and obviously our crowd, thank you. And our investors include Winnovation Capital, the chairman of the Israel Export Institute here in Israel, as well as Omninet, which is a $3 billion fund led by Neil Kadisha, the Qualcomm co-founder. A lot of big names here. We use a lot of these services. They've all been hacked. Now, what is the combination and similarity in all these? While cybercrime is forecast to hit over $2 trillion by 2020, the vast majority of these aren't due to hackers. They're due to internal employees who are just careless. An employee on a Friday needs to share a file, uses the wrong sharing platform, settling the files at his or her house, and suddenly a hacker can get to it much easier by not having to go through the company. Our platform is a single integrated platform that automatically discovers, classifies, encrypts, monitors and governs, and then uses AI to track every person, action, location, combination. We're able to track data based on keywords, based on ontologies, based on categorizations. A simple example is for a healthcare company, anytime it sees a patient ID, it'll automatically protect that file for any patient ID and say it can only be viewed by a certain subset of people. If an employee leaves the firm, with 100 or 100,000 files, the moment the HR team removes them from the database, there's an immediate waterfall effect where they no longer can access files anywhere the files are. We use AI to then analyze all this data because how do you protect for a situation you cannot figure out? Perhaps somebody's using my credentials to log on in a new location in a way that I never logged on before. Maybe I log in with 10 files per day, suddenly I'm pulling 100 files per hour. That's peculiar and our system will find this. Our system is extremely simple. In this example, we use UBeam, another our crowd portfolio company. And here's an example of UBeam's patent application. Perhaps this application was emailed by mistake, or sent as an attachment, or lost on a USB drive, or a laptop was stolen. Any time that our system sees the words confidential, or the words patent application, or really any other particular keyword or ontology you're looking for, the file's automatically protected. For the employees, they get a very simple user bar at the top that explains what level of protection we have, on the right side, we show our dashboarding and audit functionality. We can export logs. We can do different kinds of visualizations within our system and also export to platforms like Tableau. And we also have an interesting use case where we can protect Bitcoin wallets by saying, for example, for me, for Ben, my wallet can only be opened on my computer, on my network, on my IP range, and my GPS coordinates. So even if somebody stole my laptop and opened it at the next house, the next network, the next country, it will not work. Our pricing model is simple, Google-style pricing based on my background of $100 per user license per year. Simple example, 2,000 users is $200,000 per year. We have 100 plus prospects right now for the first half of the year. We have 20 plus live RFPs or POCs, half of them are actually paid. And we have five RFPs targeting over $1 million per year business annual subscription. Our go-to-market is not hiring salespeople. It's forming tier one partnerships with, with companies like PwC and Deloitte. We've turned a fixed cost of salespeople into a marginal cost as a revenue share. For 2018, we're forecasting over $5 million of ARR, and we're currently beginning a fundraise on the Our Crowd platform. We have a ton of really interesting partners, whether they're integrated at the API level or at the SDK level. We're completely cross-platform. We're file agnostic. We can do any kind of file in any location, focusing on unstructured data. We won a few cool awards, and right now, we're protecting over 50 million files and counting. We have a great quote from the CISO of Levi's. Levi's licenses their materials to external providers of manufacturing. They use our platform to securely control, protect, and erase files remotely when they no longer want to share them. So my name is Ben Coleman. Our company is ozone.ai. Feel free to reach out to me or your representative from our crowd to learn more. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Next, we have Enav from Panorama. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Einav Navi Azaria. I'm the CEO of Panorama Software. And today I'm going to introduce you to the world first system of insight. So before we start, I have a confession to make. We're in Jerusalem, so that's the play for confessions. I'm a dataholic, which means that in the last 20 years, that's what I do. I deal with data. I actually uh, provided data type solutions for the world leading companies. But I'm not only a dataholic, I'm also a shopaholic. So I love shopping. And you know that nowadays going to the shop is very much 2007, right? We hate going to the shop because people push you and you don't always have this personal experience. So I love doing shopping in Amazon, actually one of our great customers, Amazon. And why? Because when I go to Amazon, Amazon understands me better than my wife knows me. It knows exactly what I need to buy. Actually, it's recommend me the next best option for me to buy during my shopping session. Now, Amazon did it and drove their sales to the sky because they had an holistic view of all their users using our technology to enhance their collaborative filtering algorithms. Now, today, every corporate is just like Amazon. Telecoms, financial services, insurance companies, they all want to have online interactions. But unlike Amazons, unlike Amazons, they don't have an holistic view of the data sources, which means that actually corporates today leverage only 10% of their data for decision making. If you cal calculate the number, they have 100% of the data out there, which is called dark data. They don't touch it. They only leverage 10% of the data, which means that if you calculate the ROI, you only make decisions based on 10% of your available data. And that's exactly what we are there to solve. So we are out there to help every corporate become just like Amazon, to enlighten all the dark data that they have in their corporate. In essence, our mission in life, and what I'm going to deal with in the next 10 years, is to create the number one system of, system of insight in the world, to find insight and blind spot in 100% of their corporate data. That's a massive transformation for corporates today. Now, you can see that we are covered by the world top analysts, and we love working with Forrester because we believe that they are actually innovators. They look a little bit ahead of where the market is. And this is a coverage that we received back in September, just a few months back. And our claim to fame that our advanced recommendation engine is the one and only engine in the industry that not only makes sense of data, but also recognizes what piece of data, what insight should be delivered in real time and in context to the right business user. So if you think about it, our system doesn't require any analyst between the data to the business user. Our system is like this magician, imaginary analyst running all the time in the background, finding insights and catering it to the right business user when he needs to make the decision in context, in his business process. We're also fortunate to partner with a, a great company, a great Israeli company this year with Amdocs and receive their innovation award and also receive some recognition from BDO and Gartner. So you can see that actually our innovation is now becoming mainstream in the market. Now, last, I do want to give a quick snapshot of an experience of an end user. So practically, when an end user opens our system, the only thing that he needs to do is to point to a data source. And when he points, let's say, to a sales data, etc., the work has ended. Our system connects to the data source, model it automatically, find insights, anomalies, segmentations, correlations, and automatically create what was used to be a dashboard. We call it workboard because it's now fully interactive for him to look at the inside. Now more than that, the system itself also tell him what to do with every piece of insight we created. So we have the algorithm looks for other people in the organization that are related to every K performance indicator that he looks at. So every business user is not alone anymore. We tell him what he can do next and with whom. Now, the last slide here is just showing you the concept sitting behind that. You know, when you go to Amazon, Amazon tells you people like you who looked at that or bought that, also bought that. 
This is a massive collaborative filter algorithm writing in, running in the background, and that's exactly what we do. We actually listen to every user in the organization automatically. We figure out what he needs and when he needs it. And then we go to the data and we scan all the data. And then when we found the insights, we just create the match automatically between the user and the data. So again, we are fortunate to have about 200 enterprise customers running on our platform today. Great customers literally in each and every industry out there. The last few years, we start verticalizing our solutions. We have great solutions for communication companies, medias, and commerce companies. And now we're actually doing some great partnership also in the retail field. If you are a corporate and you want to test our product, it's really simple. Just drop me an email, ceo at panorama.com, and I'll be happy to connect my team. If you're an investor and you want to speak with me and about our next round that probably will happen in the next two years, let's start engaging, getting to know each other, and you will see our growth. So with that, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the conference. Cheers. Thank you, Enav. Now for our last speaker of this session, we have Isaac from Morphisec. Afternoon, everybody. I'm Isaac Beery. I'm at Morphisec, and I uh, run the European part of our business. Uh, um, so, who is Morphisec? We are in the endpoint security business. Talk to the mic. Move the mic. Okay. We are in the endpoint security business, and we help companies secure their computing assets laptops, servers, virtualized environments from all these types of uh, quite interesting hacking and hackers that are targeting to do damage to you. The company was established in 2014. We are now around 40 employees in Israel, the USA, Europe, and India. Uh, we just completed our round B at the end of uh, December, so we are... Uh, in this stage where we are expecting a lot of growth this year, uh, uh, pretty much on all the geographies we are uh, working out. The product was launched in May 2016, and today is installed with enterprise customers pretty much uh, in the three geographies we are active at. What does MorphiSec do? So our mission is really to um, help companies protect their assets when they need it protected, and not a week later, or a day later, or a little bit after a problem occurs, but before a problem occurs. So our main mission is, uh, if we can make a situation where some of the attacks a company has, if not most of the attacks, are prevented, uh, eventually these attacks do not need to be detected and do not need to be remediated. So the more you prevent, the better your business uh, um, looks like and the better your uh, uh, business continuity looks like. So this is what we do at MorphiSec. Now, you've probably been seeing lots of security products around here. Where do we operate? We operate where actually today a lot of the attackers are moving their activity to, and that is the memory of your computers. So most of the interesting attacks that have been happening in the past two years are happening in memory. They are fileless attacks. They have nothing to do with your data or your database or your file. Uh, they operate directly with the operating system. They are evasive. They are zero-day attacks in many cases. So they all eventually have to execute in memory. And that layer of the computing device is an area that has not been looked into as such. And we are pretty much focusing there. And if you look at the type of attacks, um, and, and, and these are statistics that companies like us in the business are publishing all the time, you will see more and more zero-day attacks, evasive attacks, social engineering attacks. These are all attacks that are heavily dependent on human behavior, either human that create a system or human that run a system. So these two elements uh, bring us into a situation that we are in a business that's really agile now and changing. So basically, we are looking at what's happening at the enterprise business and trying to see the relationship between the cyber defense element and the attack element and trying a bit to, to, to balance this unbalanced infrastructure, take a little bit of the surprise that the attacker has for us 
at the enterprise and move it back to him. Make the attacker surprised by failing to attack and hoping he moves elsewhere and keeping our enterprise running properly. So what do we actually do? I'm going to skip the slide and move around here. Basically, and I'm not going to get too technical, as the name suggests, MorphiSec handles the memory area, and we create a situation where the memory is continuously morphed. So the memory of your server or your client is actually changing all the time, irrespectively of the application or the process that is running, and irrespectively of the attack or the type of attack that is running. So it can actually be a process or an application that you will only write in six months, and an attack that will only be created in six or nine months. But when the attacker gets to the memory and has to execute by injecting some piece of code or manipulating a piece of information or a piece of data, he will get to a situation where he cannot find his target. And we create two things here. One is that the attack is prevented, it cannot be executed, and by failing to find the target, the attacker makes himself visible for us pre-breach pre -breach and not post-breach, as you see today in common platforms. So that is what we do at uh, MorphiSec, and the platform is pretty much relevant for any type of organization running Windows systems. Actually, what we are telling customers today and what we are seeing today is there are basically two areas that bother us. One is the known attacks that we all know of and companies are running to patch and update their system to protect against. And then this layer of attacks that are always unknown and always surprise us. And with MorphiSec, we basically reduce by a very significant amount the risk associated with that unknown area. And that unknown area is where the sophisticated attacks are, are actually working today. What you get is a system which is easy to deploy, there's actually very little management, zero configuration, no, data, no databases, no patches, no updates, no false alarms, which is one of the most um, expensive issues to deal with for a corporate today, and a protection layer that protects against most of, the, most of these evasive attacks that is happening today. So it's really quick to deploy, completely agnostic of your infrastructure or your application structure, anything that runs on the machine is, is protected, and very, very high resilience in the way it operates because we are a pre-breach element. So the fact is that when attacks occur, they basically cannot run. And the entire effort of remediating from an attack is kept. It's just kept away. So we are secure, we are simply to operate, and we allow your business to run uh, and continue. This is very relevant today. Just, just a piece of thing we are talking about with customers today is the issue of GDPR. Probably heard about it, a long, a long discussion about it. Our idea is, for some of the attacks, if they never happen, you never need to report them. So it's very interesting for businesses that are regulated and looking in into this area. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm here. We have a booth at the entrance. Come and see us. Thank you.